Hi guys, I'm here with chapter two, which is a really long chapter. I've just had a look and it's called Pigeons and Raisins. You might want to take this one in two chunks. So anyway, back to babies again. Some man named Augustus, seriously, that's a bad name, but it's got to be better than Decemberus, decided he wanted to make an enormous list of names, places and people. The only way Augustus could figure out who was who was to ask people to travel all the way back to where they were born and sign up on the list for each town. Can you imagine how long the queues would be? Boring. So anyway, though Mary was getting to be the size of a small house because she was engaged and because she was engaged to Joe, a local carpenter, they both had to get themselves off to Bethlehem because that's where Joe was born. Did you know Joe's great granddad times 38 great was called David? In fact, most people knew him as King David once he killed a giant called Goliath by throwing a pebble in his face. No, seriously, he did. You can check it out in the Bible in 1 Samuel 17. He was born in Bethlehem too. How awesome is that? Coincidence? Or was it all part of the plan? When they finally arrived in Bethlehem, Mary was getting pretty uncomfortable. Oof. When the baby decided to announce he was on his way, she sent Joe off to find somewhere to stay. It was pretty urgent. Ouch. Joe rushed back to Mary and said he'd found them a five-star place to share with a few others. It had a great on sweet facilities and free snacks. Unfortunately, it turned out that Joe hadn't quite understood what he'd been told. They ended up a place that certainly had one very bright star shining above it, and there was definitely others that they had to share it with, except they weren't people, they were animals. The on suite facilities were great for the cows and the sheep, but maybe Mary and Joe didn't enjoy the smell. Thank you. And the free snacks. Well, if you're a cow and sheep, then hay makes a fantastic snack. But for Mary and Joe, it was a little bit chewy. The hay might have not been tasty, but it gave Mary a great idea. She wrapped her baby in a scratchy blanket and used the hay to make him a kind of nest in the animal's feed box. Well, the sheep seemed pretty interested in the new snack, but Mary made sure they didn't nibble more than a few toes. Mary named the baby Jesus, just as the angel had told her to. While Mary was trying to get the new baby to sleep, some shepherds nearby were desperately trying to stay awake. Yawn. Someone had to keep watch to make sure the sheep didn't get gobbled up by monsters. Well, by wolves or something. Just as the shepherd's eyes were beginning to close, they were almost blinded by a super bright light. They screwed their eyes up tightly and squinted at something big and white and shiny. The shiny something started to talk and the shepherds were absolutely terrified. It said, don't be scared. I'm here to tell you something super awesome. Just over those hills in the town where King David was born all those years ago, a new baby is lying in a nest made of hay, wrapped in a scratchy blanket and waiting to meet you. He was born for you. In fact, he's going to save you because he is the saviour, the Messiah, the Lord. The shepherds looked at each other, then looked back at the shiny thing, then looked at each other and then said, mm, I think that's an angel. Before they had time to answer, loads of other shiny guys appeared and started singing so loud that when the shepherds put their fingers in their ears, they could still hear every word. They were singing. God is so amazing. He's worth more than anything ever. He's bringing peace to all on earth, so we all sing together. God is so amazing. He's worth more than anything ever. He's bringing peace to all on earth, so we're singing together. God is so amazing. He's more than anything ever. He's bringing peace to all on earth. And so we sing together. Oh, you get the idea. By now, the shepherds had figured out that these were, in fact, 
definitely angels. And because they'd heard that if an angel gives you a message from God, you really should do it, they decided that maybe they ought to go and visit the baby. They arrived in Bethlehem and the shepherds were amazed. There he was, this tiny baby lying in a nest of hay in the place where the cows and the sheep had made quite a smell. Interesting. The shepherds decided they probably should tell Mary what the angels had said and this ba about this baby being so special, being a saviour, in fact the saviour, the messiah and the lord. Joe was slightly confused and thought perhaps the shepherds needed some sleep but Mary listened to what they were saying and she began to wonder. Did you know, in fact, that Jesus which means, which is Yeshua in Hebrew, means one who saves. Do you think that's a coincidence? The shepherds suddenly realised they'd been away from their sheep for quite a while and remembered they were supposed to be protecting them from wolves. So they ran all the way back to their fields, but they were so excited by what they'd seen that they couldn't resist jumping up and down and dancing as they went. Let me assure you, that shepherd's dancing is the worst kind of dancing you can imagine. Majorly embarrassing. Just no. But the shepherds didn't care. They were so excited and they tried to remember the song that the angels had been singing earlier. God is so amazing. He's worth more than any of my sheep. He's bringing peace to all on earth and soon we'll go to sleep. Don't cheat and go back. But can you remember what the angels actually said? It wasn't quite the same as that one. A few days later, Mary and Joe took Jesus to the city. They had to take him to the temple and officially name him. Strangely, they also had to take two pigeons with them. We'll call them Ploppy and Prunella, though maybe we shouldn't name them. Want to know why? Well, you could find out in the Bible in Leviticus 12, verses 6 to 8. When Mary and Joe arrived in the temple, an old wrinkly man called Simeon was waiting for them. Mary and Joe had never met Simeon before. It said that God had told him to come to the temple and wait for them to bring Jesus along. Suddenly, Simeon grabbed hold of Jesus and held him high in the air and swung him round and round until he was super dizzy. Uh, there we go. Mary and Joe were, were just about to politely remove Jesus from this rather peculiar old man when he suddenly began to sing. I'm the servant of God, the, uh, the one and only God, He's the only one who could, and I just knew he would. He sent the world a saviour to light the way for all. And now I've seen him on my own. I know I'm ready to go home. Mary and Joe hurled on to Ploppy and Prunella in their pigeon box and watched the old man in amazement. He sang and sang and twirled Jesus around and around for what seemed like hours. Joe was beginning to wonder if it ever stopped when suddenly he turned to Mary and said, This child will do amazing things. Mary thought that sounded good, but not everyone would like him. Mary and Joe wondered how the old man could know that, that and thought it was a bit mean to say such a thing about Jesus when he was only a baby. I mean, he could turn out all right, couldn't he? Simeon carried on. He's going to do things you can never imagine. That sounded good again. But Mary, you'll suffer because of him. You really will. What? Simeon handed Jesus back to Mary and wandered off. Joe was just about to suggest they went home before Simeon came back with a tiny old lady and she walked right up to them. Joe bent down and peered into her raisin-like face. Two tiny eyes stared back at him. It was Anna. Everyone knew Anna. She was always in the temple serving God. She was virtually part of the furniture. Anna was so excited to see Jesus that she told anyone who had ears all about him at least three times whenever she saw them. Eventually, Mary and Joseph left the temple and the city and Bethlehem and walked all the way back home to Nazareth. Ouch, the blisters! It's 90 miles, there's a little map. Then Jesus grew up a bit. He watched Joe make stuff out of wood. Some things that he made were pretty awesome, and some not so much. Joe made big tables, small tables, square tables, round tables, four-legged tables, three-legged tables, two-legged tables, they didn't really work well, and lots of wooden spoons. 
Jo also made quite a few wonky tables, but it turned into those speciality sculptures and told people that they were meant to be that way. Awkward. That kind of table. What kind of table would you have made? It suggests you draw the table, but I'm not going to make you. But as Jesus got older, he got stronger and taller and smarter and wiser. God made sure that he had everything he needed. Because Jesus, Mary and Joe were Jewish. Every day they went to the temple in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. What were they celebrating? Well, if you want to look it up, it's in Exodus 12. They were always hundreds of people eating strange food and saying lots of prayers. It was pretty easy for Jesus to disappear amongst the crowd. And one year, when he was about 12, Mary and Joe actually left Jesus behind. They didn't even notice he was missing for a whole day. Mary and Joe said to Joe, I thought he was with you. And Joe said to Mary, well, I thought he was with you. And Mary said to her friends, is Jesus with you? And they said, no, we thought he was with you. You should keep an eye on him, you know. So that went on. And after a while, when they finally realized that Jesus wasn't with anyone, they decided they should probably go back and look for him. Oops. Eventually, a whole three days later, Mary found Jesus hanging in the temple with all of the teachers, asking loads of questions saying things that even they don't understand. He looked completely chilled. He didn't even seem to have noticed that Mary and Joe had gone. When Mary told him how worried they'd been and told him that they looked everywhere for him, Jesus said, well, why are you looking for me? Obviously, I'll be here in the temple because that's where my dad lives. Everyone stared. And Mary looked at Joe and whispered, what's he talking about? We live in Nazareth. Mary and Joe kept a very close eye on Jesus as they made their way back to Nazareth for a second time. In fact, Mary kept a very close eye on Jesus as he grew older and stronger. And then she continued to wonder. And that's the end of chapter two. Chapter three is called Doves and Dunkers. And we'll look at that one next time.